Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to take a look at some of the new features coming on the next update. So let's say this video marks a new milestone in DSS development. Speaking about DSS, previously you could scale horizontally using DSS, have a lot of layers, new maps, whatever you want. But basically there is one key feature missing, which is the ability to interact with DSS, to get whatever going inside DSS logic or spin a new server. That wasn't a choice. Until now, this is the first thing that we are going to discuss on the video. Secondly, there is one feature, I guess this feature, I don't know if it is available in any of the uh, of the shell plugins or subsystems, but the idea is that the interaction between multiple virtual machines should be a feature. So basically player from virtual machine one connected to DSS server one should be able to interact with the player on the virtual machine two connected to DSS server two. I will start by demonstrating the second one and then we are going to talk in details about the first thing because the second one is like the more complicated stuff. Okay, so uh, probably we can remember this picture more or less. So basically we have multiple virtual machines, flash containers, whatever, and in each one there is a DSS server. Previously there was just a small feature which is basically a messaging broker it means like one server could share some sort of events or messages to the other DSS servers, but that's going asynchronously. And actually I've ended up disabling it because it's quite complicated and not much usable. Right now, DSS servers can communicate synchronously with, with each other using something called gRPC. It's a sort of remote procedural calls throughout HTTP2, HTTP2 so it's quite fast. Okay, so enough speaking and let's see everything in action. For that, I have prepared a small demo. So basically here we have two players and then we have two virtual machines running on the cloud. Each one is uh, an ARM 64 bit based virtual machine. So there is no load balancer whatsoever. I'm forcing the player number one to connect to virtual machine one slash server instance DSS server instance one and player number two to virtual machine number two slash DSS server instance two. So let's give it a try and see how it's gonna go. This is the first player and this is the second player. And you can see that this is the one of the players and this is the other player. Uh, the other player, each one is connected to a separate DSS server instance slash virtual machine. Here there is just one player and here there is just one player. What I'm gonna do is I will try to go to a dungeon instance ID2 with the first player and then the second player for a certain reason decided to go to the same dungeon instance ID. So basically on paper they are supposed to be teamed up and they want to go to the same dungeon. So what is supposed to happen right now is that this guy should be spawned with that guy. Right now they are together. And I mean, the only thing that makes this working is the communication between the two servers. After all, each one was on a separate virtual machine. So now there is no uh, need to care about the player's distribution on virtual machines because they are going to be able to interact with each other. And this is just a part of what I'm working on because after pushing this update, there's gonna be a distributed chat server that covers all the virtual machines also. Okay, that's for the first feature. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, second feature. And speaking about the second feature, on this update, whenever it's gonna be released, you are gonna be able you are gonna be able to interact, fully interact with DSS. So here, there is multiple ways to fetch all the events. The first way is simply using Redis. Using Redis, you could free, fetch a couple of events like all the online players and all the Unreal Engine servers, all the DSS server instances with their information like ports and IPs and different stuff. But the second cool feature is that there is a new uh, newly developed feature which is called Event Dispatcher. This Event Dispatcher is a queue-based event dispatcher that's going to provide you with all the events that's gonna happen internally inside DSS throughout a RESTful API. So let's say a new server is spent or a player traveled from server one to server two 
or whatever happened server closed all these events is going to be processed and you are gonna be able to get those events throughout a single restful api slash probably processing it and saving it in your database the last thing that i'm going to mention right now is that if you can remember the cli feature on version version one it's gonna be supported on dss version two except that it's going to be, to be exposed throughout a RESTful API slash gRPC. So you could communicate with any DSS server to interact with all the players, all the servers, spin a new server, terminate a server, um, let's say, uh, kick a player, move player from one server to another, just by connecting to one of DSS servers. There is no need to take into consideration that you're supposed to be on the same instance uh, with the player or the server to be able to change its state like terminating the server or kicking the player it's all handled automatically by the communication between dss servers so let's say this is a sneak peek of what you are going to get on the new uh, version of dss there is a lot of more features and as promised i'm going to prepare a completely new documentation which can sim simplify everything okay so that's it for this video thanks for watching see you on another video